There are plans to introduce a credit union in the Isle of Man and members of the public are being encouraged to go along to a meeting tonight to discuss the issue and find out what it's all about. Now, I'm with David Talbot and you're behind this idea, aren't you? Can you explain to me, first of all, what exactly is a credit union? What does it do for people? Well, a credit union does three things, um, really. First of all, it develops a savings culture, encourages people to save. That spots at the bottom of all of this. Once you become a saver, you actually become a member of the credit union. And you, if you're a member, you have a say in how that credit union is run. So unlike a bank, for example, where you deposit your money, and that's the end of the story. You have a relationship there. Uh, but with a credit union, you actually have control of it. So the members themselves decide, for example, at the end of 12 months, how much interest are we going to pay? Um, do we, how much do we invest back into the credit union to develop its services? Once you are a member, you can then apply for a loan. Uh, fairly tight in the sense that your first loan, for example, might be three times the amount of your savings. And then there's a third wing to this, and that's to do with um, guidance, financial guidance. So people are given tools such as budgeting, and other information, so signposting exercise. So overall, it's helping people to better manage their money, to give easy access, uh, and to be able to develop it into a community project. Now, we've never had anything like this in, in the Isle of Man before, I believe. Why, why do we need something like this? I think people have got fairly tired of the present uh, banking system and want something different, want something which they can feel that they have the ability to de develop themselves uh, and to be able to take control of their own finances. And I think that's the exciting part of it, that they can feel they're part of something which is growing, evolving, it's embedded in the community and they can decide its destiny really. Mm. Now, uh, this is different, isn't it, to the, uh, the, the money shops that we see springing up everywhere. The, the, I believe they're, they're called payday loan companies yes. or, or, or businesses. How, how is this different to that? Well, I mean, the, the most stark difference is the amount of interest that you pay. Um, payday loans, uh, there's plenty of documentation about what they do. Principally, a credit union offers uh, attractive rates of interest. Um, for example, um, you possibly will pay 1% per month on your rolling balance. Um, or if it's, a, if it's quite a small amount, there are, are facilities to charge more than that because obviously the admin is just the same for a small as it is for a big loan. And with regard to what you actually pay by way of interest, as I say, that's a decision the members take themselves. So essentially it, it is about actually low cost loans, uh, readily available cash if you've got savings so you can come in and draw that out any time you want. And, and the ability uh, to be able to plan a little bit better perhaps than what you're used mm. to at the moment. So, so it's giving people back some control, really, then, in what are really difficult times for a lot of people at the moment. Yeah, and I think you only need to save a small amount of money. So maybe two, three, four, five pound a week, um, people can pop in and pay that in, or set up a banker's order, direct debit, and all the modern usual ways of online stuff. Um, I think it's getting people into the habit of actually saving. And then from time to time, we all need a bit of money. I always use the example of your exhaust falls off your car on the way to work, crumbs, I need £300, where am I going to get that from? And if you're a member of a credit union, then hey, that's, that's a good way of being able to uh, fill the gap, get a, a fairly um, modest uh, um, loan for a modest rate of interest. And, and how are you personally involved in this? Well, I'm, I'm with a group of nine people, and we came together uh, uh, sort of middle of last year. We're a collection of different backgrounds. Um, my own background is in a commercial uh, lending situation. I've got a lady who's involved in regulatory FSC work, two who um, have mutual bank experience, uh, retired chartered accountant, chartered secretary, uh, two teachers. Uh, so it's a fairly wide spectrum of people and I, it really in a sense I'm just chairing this group of people. They're very enthusiastic to see this happen. When I started off I wasn't aware that anybody else knew about credit unions, but as soon as I started to talk to my friends and uh, people that I knew, they said, oh, so-and-so tried to do this, and so on. So I kind of pulled all this together, and here we are, nine people, um, and uh, we needed a bit of IT expert as well, so we're very fortunate to find someone who with the IT skills to do websites and uh, print leaflets and all the rest of it, so we're very happy that we've got quite a variety of skills, but we will need more, because at the end of the day, a credit union survives by volunteers, 
Um, we've always be a few paid staff, uh, but essentially the most hours that ever go into a mature credit union are from volunteers. And the interesting thing, if you are a volunteer, you get trained. So there's training that's provided, <coughs> excuse me, for a volunteer, and that's one of the benefits of being part of a, a trade association. And um, the trade association does provide training, uh, obviously gives you day-to-day -day guidance, and so it's useful to be able to know that we're not reinventing the wheel here. There's something that's already established elsewhere and we're importing it to, here to the Alma because we feel there's a, a real need for it here. And, and you are bringing someone over today, aren't you, to help you with the regulatory issues? Yeah, Mrs Dawn Veer, who uh, is Operations Manager for UK Credit Unions, will be here today. Um, we've got several things we want to do. We've got quite a busy itinerary for her. Her day starts with Coffee with the Bishop. Uh, and ends up with a public meeting in the Manx Legion Hall. Um, so uh, she will be also visiting a Treasury Minister and the policy group from the FSC because they're very interested in upgrading the regulations. And without that upgrade, frankly, we, we go nowhere. So it's really important. And we're very thankful for the fact that they are putting this time in. And once we're at a place where the regulation is in place, which it could be any time during this year, um, we at the same time um, are using Dawn to launch a, a leaflet uh, which will give people basic information, point them to the website, both of which will have an expression of interest form on them. And that takes about 30 seconds to fill that in. But all you're saying is basically if a credit union started on the arm, um, hey, I'd be interested in joining it. And is there a time scale to this? Well, how much energy have we got? Um, <laughs> I think the, the issue is I think I'd like to see it in place uh, by early next year. So it could start maybe from the 1st of April next year, but I'm just guessing, I've no idea, it could start earlier. We're actually ready because we've got uh, an office that we can use. Um, we've got the, uh, a certain amount of seed money, but we'll need a lot more than what we've got at the moment. Uh, we've got sufficient to get us through the first stage. So the, the printing of the leaflet, the setting up of the website, the initial sort of expenses that any organisation would have, we've got those covered, but the much bigger stuff such as um, uh, computer and the software specific to running a credit union is quite expensive uh, and then there'll be other things that we'll need and a certain amount of working capital going forward so we need to raise all of that this year so it's quite a lot going on this year to actually get this thing established.